Hi, I'm Susanne de Roy. I work at the Academic Medical Center at the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And together with colleagues from Jena University Hospital in Germany, we study prenatal exposure to the Dutch famine in association with brain size and structure in older age. We performed MRI scans in people who were born in Amsterdam around the time of the Dutch famine. The Dutch famine was a five month period at the end of World War II during which the urban western part of the Netherlands, including Amsterdam, was struck by a severe famine. During the famine, official daily rations varied between 400 and 800 calories, only a quarter to what an adult person needs per day. An estimated 30,000 people starved to death, but despite these harsh circumstances, women still conceived and gave birth to their babies. Fetal undernutrition poses a serious threat to normal brain development. Direct devastating effects of prenatal exposure to the Dutch famine were demonstrated in babies that had been exposed during the first trimester and who showed increased rates of congenital anomalies of the central nervous system. However, little is known about the effects of prenatal undernutrition on brain size and structure in older age. So we set out to investigate this in the Dutch famine birth cohort. This is a cohort consisting of almost two and a half thousand men and women who were all born in the same hospital in Amsterdam around the time of the Dutch famine and whose birth records had been kept in detail. We divided them into exposed and unexposed groups based on their date of birth. We considered a person to be prenatally exposed to the Dutch famine if the average daily ration was less than 1000 calories during a 13 week period in pregnancy. We also defined periods of 16 weeks each to differentiate between those mainly exposed in late, mid or early gestation. People born before the famine and conceived and born after the famine were considered to be unexposed and acted as control group. In previous studies in this cohort, we have shown that exposure to famine in early gestation affects several aspects of physical and mental health in later life. So it's mainly the group of people who are exposed to the famine in the beginning of pregnancy who suffered the greatest health consequences. Therefore, in the present study, we focused on the early exposed group, which had reached the mean age of 68 years at the time of the study. We invited a subsample of 150 cohort members to the clinic and 118 of them underwent MRI scanning of the brain. We examined the effects of exposure to undernutrition in early gestation on brain size, structure and white matter integrity. Looking at DTI and flare scans, we found no differences between exposed and unexposed groups in white matter integrity and hyperintensities. We also found no general differences in structural volumes. However, as you can see in this graph, when we investigated men and women separately, we found that men who had been exposed to the famine during early gestation had smaller intracranial volume than unexposed men. This difference was about 5%. Exposed men also showed smaller volumes of total cortical gray matter and white matter, cerebellar gray matter, the thalamus, the caudate nucleus and accumbens area, and more specific cortical areas. In exposed women, we did not see these volume differences. Other studies have suggested that males may be more vulnerable to the effects of fetal programming. However, the absence of the effect in females could also be explained by the fact that our study sample was biased. We have shown before that women exposed to famine in early gestation demonstrated increased mortality up to the age of 63 years. So this may have caused the inclusion of the more healthy women among this group, leading to an under underestimation of the effect of prenatal undernutrition on brain volumes in exposed women. Our data suggested that prenatal famine exposure had an overall diminishing effect on brain size. The question of course is whether these volume differences have been there from birth or have developed over time. Intracranial volume is mostly dependent on brain growth and is thought to largely stay the same over time. This would suggest that the smaller ICV we found may have been the consequence of an early interruption of brain development. However, the effect could also be due or partly due to atrophy. 
Some evidence suggests that ICV is not so stable over time but does decrease with age. Of course, the effect could also be due to a combination of the two. Several studies have shown that the smaller brain size attained in childhood is associated with an increased prevalence of Alzheimer's disease, as well as an increased severity of the disease and an earlier onset. We aim to study the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease in our cohort in the future. But for now, we think it's astounding that something that happened 68 years ago during pregnancy is still visible in the brains of these men. We think that this clearly underlines the importance of maternal nutrition for brain development in early life, but also in later life.